This is an absolutely shocking story from war-torn Gaza. The Israeli military has forced Palestinians to enter potentially booby-trapped houses and tunnels in the Gaza Strip to avoid putting its troops in harm's way. That's what an Israel Defense Forces soldier and five former detainees who say they were victims of this practice have now revealed. According to CNN, the soldier who said his unit held two Palestinian prisoners for the explicit purpose of using them as human shields to probe dangerous places has stated that the practice is prevalent amongst Israeli units in Gaza. He elaborated by saying, and I quote, we told them to enter the building before us. If there are any booby traps, they will explode and not us. It is so common in the Israeli military that it has a name, Mosquito Protocol. Imagine referring to a human being as a mosquito. The exact scale and scope of the practice by the Israeli military is not known, but the testimony of the soldier as well as those five civilians show that it's widespread across the territory in northern Gaza, Gaza City, Khan Yunus and Rafah. The soldier explained that at first his unit used standardized procedures before entering the suspect building, sending in a dog or punching a hole through its side with a tank shell or an armored bulldozer. But one day, this spring, an intelligence officer showed up with two Palestinian detainees, a 16-year-old boy and a 20-year-old man, and told the troops to use them as human shields before entering buildings. The intelligence officer claimed these two young men were connected to Hamas. When the soldier questioned the practice, he says one of the commanders told him, it's better that the Palestinian will explode and not our soldiers. The soldier goes on to say, it's quite shocking, but after a few months in Gaza, you tend not to think clearly, you're just tired. Obviously, I prefer that my soldiers live, but you know, that's not how the world works. The soldier then said, he and his comrades refused to carry on with this practice and after two days and confronted their senior commander about it. Their commander who first told them not to think about the international law, saying that their own lives were more important, ultimately relented releasing the two Palestinians. And the very fact that these two Palestinians were released, the soldier says, made it clear to him that they had no affiliation whatsoever with Hamas and that they were certainly not terrorists. In a statement, the Israeli military has claimed the IDF's directives and guidelines strictly prohibit the use of detained Gaza civilians for military operations. The relevant protocols and instructions are routinely clarified to soldiers in the field during the conflict. Now, international law clearly forbids the use of civilians to shield military activity or to forcibly involve civilians in military operations. The Israeli Supreme Court explicitly banned this practice in 2005 after rights groups filed a complaint about the Israeli military's use of Palestinian civilians to knock on the doors of suspected militants in the West Bank. Justice Aharon Barak at the time called the practice cruel and barbaric. Israel has long accused Hamas of using civilians in Gaza as human shields, embedding military infrastructure in civilian areas. The Israeli military frequently cites those practices in blaming Hamas for the extraordinary civilian death toll in Gaza, where Israel has dropped bombs on those same residential areas. In fact, Israeli attacks have killed more than 42,000 Palestinians in Gaza since the 7th of October last year, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. The United Nations says that most of the dead were civilians. And this Israeli soldier told CNN, and I quote, We saw Hamas using Palestinians as human shields, but for me it's more painful with my own army. Hamas is a terrorist organization. The idea should not use terror organization practices.